Just lift the table, we'll be good to go. I thought for um, uh, this early in the season, uh, three games in, uh, the second half, uh, we hit what I call that rhythm that I've talked about so much with some of my great teams at Oregon where uh, it's almost like dancing because you get into a you get into a pattern of the defense becomes a feeding frenzy where you get stops, you get rebounds. Uh, I thought we were exceptional in the man defense. We didn't have to junk it up with 13 with our 1-3-1 press. And then more importantly, the rhythm of the game where you start to shoot the ball within 8 to 12 seconds, but everything is a, a good shot. And it's a very underrated passing team. Uh, I just thought they were exceptional for this early in the season. Do we have a lot of work to do? Yes, we do. And I still feel like we have an enormous growth potential because there's a few guys yet that can still uh, what I call get on their games. And when we do that, uh, this team it has halves, I've said it again, between 50 and 70 points in it. Uh, they can really score. One of the best shooting teams that I've coached. This game really kind of showed Robo's ability to, to facilitate. We, we've seen his ability to score and rebound, but he, he kind of gave up a lot of opportunities to score to get other guys involved today. I, I, you know, for a guy of his size and have that skill set where he can he can have the feathery three-point shot, he can score inside, but he can rebound the ball and bring it the length of the floor like like a, you know like Draymond Green. I, he, he's very similar in terms of his ability to push pace. Uh, you put him out there with, with Drick Bernstein, who also can rebound and be a point guard and push pace. It just makes you hard to guard. And those guys are skilled enough to find people. I'm glad people saw that part of Robo's game because he's not just a shooter. He's a complete player. And if we can get him to continue to come defensively, you know, he has a chance, chance to be really special. I think he was a rebound and, and two assists shy of a triple-double with about three minutes left. Were you aware of that or did, did you have a... No, I, I wasn't aware of it. I'll talk to my staff about not making me aware of it because I certainly would have put him out there to get a triple double. He's come a long way since we saw him at a, our, our camp with his going between his junior and senior year. And there was a guy that was 50 more pounds on him. And, and I had a staff telling me, boy, we don't know if he can get up and down the floor with that speed game. And here he is today just leading the break in that speed game. That's a credit to him. Does this also show what the offense can do when Malachi shots uh, falling? I mean, he's kind of been waiting for it, but today it kind of felt like it was dropping him most of the time. I think our defense and the ability to, to, to play the 1-3-1 one, one and to be able to really lock down defense man-to-man -man shows the potential of the offense. Uh, Malachi and his ability to score, yes. But then also, you've got Carter Skaggs. You saw Quentin Henson, a flash of what he could be. That, he's a really good player. He, he just hasn't figured everything out yet, but, it, but it's slowly starting to come. And he can shoot. And uh, Keith Langston can shoot. we got a lot of good shooters. so. Offensively, uh, I just think there's more to, sh to be shown. Malachi finally started scoring, but uh, let's get a game where it's Robo, Malachi, Deontay Daniels, Carter, Quentin, Keith, they're all scoring. Uh, then it's going to be something special to see. Lanes were opening, guys were cutting. Uh, it just seemed like they were having a lot of fun out there tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Chemistry-wise, on the basketball floor and off of it, is this the best team you've had at closeness-wise? Here at At Wazoo? WSU. Uh, I would say yes, uh, it is, and yet, uh, and you mentioned the word fun because that's what we talked about this morning in our in our walkthrough, and we talked about it before the game too. That the game, the game needs to be fun, and if you can get into that rhythm where you're playing defense and you're sharing the ball, uh, you're showing off your skill set with your ability to pass it, it will be fun because it feeds the system feeds everybody, it, and it really does. And and I think they got a taste of that tonight where. This afternoon, I should say, where I thought they were having a lot of fun. A lot of fun getting stops on defense. A lot of fun getting out running. A lot of fun sharing the ball. And obviously, it's a lot of fun when you score. Lorenze, um, you could just see him get more and more comfortable with each game shooting the ball. The defense is, has been there each game. What, what have you seen from him this summer and, the, and just kind of his progression so far through three games? You and Lorenze hang out. You guys, buddies, you ask a lot of Lorenze questions in this media conference. <laughs> Is he paying you to ask those questions? You guys are buddies, aren't you? I'm kind of figuring that one out. You know, um, to his credit, uh, I, I thought last year there were times in practice where we just couldn't guard him and we couldn't guard Milan at times in practice. Uh, Marenzi is starting to really develop right now. And when we get Jeff Pollard back and Lorenzi doesn't have to go down and play inside anymore, let him play free out on the perimeter like Robo, you're talking about Robo, Drake together, Arenze, Jeff together. You've got the middle on lockdown. You've got two four men that can really score the ball. 
and, and people I think they're probably surprised but he's an excellent three-point shooter and he puts a lot of time into his game and uh, I'm just pleased that how hard he's worked and the fact he's starting to have some success. This has to be exciting for you. I, I know you guys have a lot of work to do and, and, and the season's far from, from getting started, but going down with a, a, a big opportunity in California to, to kind of put your guys' names on the map, but what's that like for you in, in, in seeing this team kind of grow? Well, one thing about coaches, we, we don't get too up, we don't get too down. We don't get too excited about too many things. A few things we get excited about. But for the most part, it's about just looking at a team start to emerge and start to develop. It's taken us three years to put this group together. Uh, let me take a moment and acknowledge Coach Graham and Coach Dominguez, who are not here with us, and, and the job they did in early on at, at really uh, what I would call, and even Coach Allen, balancing out a program to really get the foundation in it with the academics, the character, and then we've taken it up another notch with the recruiting. And to finally have, for the first time, everybody in the program are the guys we recruited and starting to piece it together now, and hopefully people can see uh, the speed game and the running game. The exciting part is about they have so much more growth potential in them. And if they will continue to buy in and continue to work and we can continue to be patient with them, uh, it's exciting, it really is. It's nice, I'm anxious to see how we're gonna handle the road because the road, uh, the road is gonna force us to grow some more one way or another. You have to grow up on the road. So in the first two games, you, uh, your team had got off to a slow start. Is there anything that you told your team to kind of put some urgency into them in the first half of this game? I just told them to have fun. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. Uh, make sure they start the game with great energy and great passion. Uh, I thought uh, we started out really well, and then we went through a, a, a stretch of about three or four minutes where we had great looks, and the ball didn't go in. Then we switched up defenses a little bit, and, and we, we weren't as successful in our 1-3-1, in our and they kind of kept the game right there. Uh, the second half, the, the challenge was uh, to shut this team down defensively, man-to-man, -man, and, and get running, get into that rhythm. And w once we got a feel for what that looked like, uh, that group we started with, I felt like, really got us rolling, and, and the rest of it, we just took care of the game. So I noticed you started Drick this game. Uh, is it kind of, you brought him off the bench early last game, or you just kind of, is that just working him in, or? trying to get him into the starting role? Well, the fact that he hadn't played for three months or so, I mean, here is a graduate transfer uh, that was the, the most valuable player on his team, uh, one of the best athletes that, that have played at, at his school there in, in Dakota. Um, you know, a guy that's been in the NCAA tournament. He, he's been in the bright lights. He is our starter. We brought him in to start. He was kind of that missing piece, and yet he's been hurt, so we've been kind of gradually getting him back. So. I wanted to get them starting now just for him, to get the jitters out, to get them ready for what's coming next week. Uh, we're going to have to step up another notch with the competition we're going to be playing against, and we need him to be ready for that. During your time at Oregon, you were here when, when Beasley was rocking. You had some, some road games when, when this place is packed. What, what's it like to, to, to know that like this it can happen here again? And, and, and to get those fans back out. Like, it's gotta, there's got to be this like, unsatisfied taste in your mouth. Well, it's very unsatisfying, but yet we have to put the product on the floor uh, for people that want to come out. And I think we have that product with this team. They're fun to watch. Uh, they're excellent in, in, the, in the college community. Uh, they're excellent in the classroom, uh, this team. Uh, their GPA is strong. They do a lot of good things that I think people will feed off of that will allow them to get in the gym and, and see them play in this arena. Uh, when they do get in here, if we can play that style you just saw, uh, that's a very, uh, what I would call, attractable style for people to come in and watch. If we can get five to 7,000 people in that arena, uh, it's really going to be amazing where, what level of intensity we can play at defensively that will trigger the confidence and the energy offensively. That's the missing piece right now. And we need to conquer some things on the road and just come back here. We know the students are on break. Uh, football is still playing. Uh, everything hasn't shifted over to basketball. We're going to hit December. The students are going to go away again. We're still here. So we've got to march through this preseason and, and handle it ourselves and come to conference season uh, with confidence, a good record, confidence, uh, moving forward on defense and offense. And then I know the people will come. So. Unfortunately, uh, we're in an environment, the old uh, Iowa filled the dreams, if you build it, they will come. I'm hoping if we build it, they will come. And you should see and feel 
that it's starting to get there. And this has been a show me first kind of college community, unfortunately. Uh, I did not put Washington State uh, in this hole. Uh, my teams at Oregon helped put them there, but I'm, I'm hired to bring them out of this hole. And that's what we're in the process of doing, and we've done it off the floor with our character of recruiting. The last piece is on the floor. We need the students. We will not get there without the students. We can play all the great, greatest we want to play. We will not get there if those students aren't there when those teams come in here, if they don't feel the heat and pressure of that defense because of the noise and energy in that building. And we could be an exceptional team offensively if we can get the students in that building behind us. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm done.